the law will prevail, that will get justice. If in the end, the device, we will all sit down as a family and decide the way forward. Like birds flocking together and the old saying goes, show me your friends and I will tell you the kind of person you are. Observing the ministerial nominees, it becomes evident what kind of person Tinubu is, as well as the type of associates he prefers to work with. While one of the nominees, Stella Okateti, faced numerous accusations, ranging from document falsification to monumental fraud when she was appointed to the Nexon Bank Board, our focus shifts to Dan Lady. Dan Lady faced disqualification by the Supreme Court in 2019 for certificate forgery and lying under oath during his time as deputy governor of Taraba State. Interestingly, the same Supreme Court saved him when he was impeached by the Taraba House of Assembly and later reinstated him as deputy governor, making him the acting governor in the absence of the governor due to an accident. The case of Dan Ladi serves as a reminder that the law is impartial. It catches up with those in the wrong while sparing those in the right. In his instance, he forged a certificate and lied about his age under oath. The appeal he made to the Supreme Court, which included the current Chief Justice of Nigeria, resulted in a unanimous judgment against him, sacking him, and declaring that the APC had no governorship candidate in Taraba State in 2019. Consequently, the Taraba State government moved to gazette the judgment, implying that Dan Ladi would be banned from contesting any position for 10 years from the date of the gazette. However, it remains unclear if the Taraba state government eventually raised the white paper, which would have prohibited Dan Ladi from participating in any election for the next 10 years, and whether they charged him for perjury, considering that the Supreme Court had already established that he lied under oath and falsified his age. Turning to the present, Tinubu is facing similar accusations before the presidential election petition tribunal. Regardless of the tribunal's verdict, it is highly likely that the losing party will appeal to the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of Nigeria's role in this scenario is crucial, and it remains uncertain whether he will participate in the five-man panel that will hear the appeal or appoint five different justices. It is worth noting that two current Supreme Court justices were part of a previous panel that disqualified Saleh for certificate forgery, indicating a precedent for such cases. Tinubu is facing accusations of certificate forgery and lying about dual nationality. The outcome of these proceedings will significantly impact Nigeria's future and its citizens, regardless of their social status. As the Supreme Court decides on the presidential election petition, past judgments in similar cases may influence the outcome, raising questions about adhering to precedent. Many people caution against going overboard or overreaching, urging that we should let the justices do their work and refrain from making hasty judgments. However, they often overlook a crucial fact. When someone is caught red-handed committing a crime, the evidence is abundant and the verdict becomes almost entirely predictable. Except in the peculiar context of Nigeria, where unexpected outcomes occasionally occur, the truth becomes evident when there are no hidden agendas. This principle applies not only to this specific case, but generally, when the police seek to prosecute someone for a crime. They conduct a thorough investigation in the prosecutor's office or with the state attorney general to ensure they have compelling evidence that can secure a conviction beyond a reasonable doubt. This clear-cut evidence, grounded in the law, leaves no room for ambiguity. For example, in the case of certificate forgery, the Nigerian constitution explicitly states that anyone aspiring to become the president of Nigeria will be automatically disqualified if found to have forged a certificate. These rules are unequivocal and transparent, leaving little chance for any attempt to evade them covertly, even if attempts are made to manipulate the situation. It would require extensive explanations to justify any grounds for disqualification. The issues at hand encompass certificate forgery, the forfeiture of narcotics proceeds worth $460,000 to the U.S. government, and problematic aspects of the presidential nomination process in the All Progressives Congress, APC. Failure to appoint a new vice presidential candidate within 14 days of the previous nominee's withdrawal 
and inaccurately withdrawing a prior nomination as a senatorial candidate in Borno Central Senatorial District resulted in a double nomination offense. Furthermore, the matter of dual nationality, though not inherently a crime, raises concerns as the Constitution frowns upon presidential candidates willingly embracing another country's nationality. Swearing an oath of allegiance to a foreign country and subsequently lying about it on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC form, constitutes another significant issue. Additionally, the failure to score 25% in Abuja poses a potential invalidation of the candidate's declaration. Considering these circumstances, the magnitude of the challenges faced by anyone attempting to subvert justice becomes evident. The situation is straightforward and the laws are clear. Nigeria cannot afford to experience unexpected outcomes this time, as the stakes are too high. The decisions made will undoubtedly shape the future of the country, and everyone will have to bear the consequences. Regardless of one's status in Nigerian society, one cannot escape the realities of the nation, be it poor road conditions, insecurity challenges, or inflation issues. These challenges affect everyone, irrespective of their wealth or social standing. Therefore, it is imperative that we unite and collectively work to build a country that caters to the needs of all citizens. Regardless of one's status or earning power, Nigeria must function effectively and equitably. The outcome of the presidential election petition at the Supreme Court, with the involvement of three justices previously engaged in similar cases, will undoubtedly be an interesting matter to observe. The question remains, will they uphold the precedent they set by disqualifying candidates or reconsider their decisions based on one individual? Your thought and comment will be appreciated in the comments section, as it is what drives us to do more. Excerpt from the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal hearing will be covered tomorrow, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on the bell notification, so you can get notified whenever we upload new content on our page. Share our content with family and friends, most especially concerned Nigerians. Thanks for watching.